Hello once again. I'm Richard. And I'm Sean. And we are speaking the language of bromance. Hey, man. What up? How you doing? I, I'm fantastic. I'm ready to rock and roll. It's episode two-ish. Two-ish? Uh, yeah. I like two. I haven't, I haven't decided if we're going to do zero zero yet on that or if we're going to do... Uh, Call it 01. We'll probably call it 01 just to stay consistent. It's the origin story. Yeah. Uh, issue zero or just, you know, you always see those later on, so we'll just start with issue number one. Why Ep- not? Episode Krypton. <laughs> <laughs> so what what you been up to? What's been going on? Um, I I really haven't been doing much. Uh, I've been, tr- I've been trying to stay away from playing games, video games. I've been... I've I've learned that that a video game to me is a complete and utter time vampire. Mm-hmm. Like you you start you start with something for a minute and then I don't know if it's just maybe I'm a completionist I don't know, but I start playing and then I just keep going and going and going. And the last worst example for me was Diablo three. I rented Diablo three at uh at a um I had it for I think for like five days or something. Then after it was three days late, then I went back and renewed it for another five days and then just kept pl- and I just kept going. And really the point of that, I mean, there is a story to the game and I'm not trying to diminish the story. It's it's pretty decent, but basically and essentially what that game is, is you run around and you kill things and you take stuff and you use that stuff to kill more things to get more stuff. And that's all you do. You just kill and loot and you kill and you loot. But you get it's it's almost like an addiction thing because you start and you're like, oh, I get something better. Well, if I mm-hmm. keep going, then then I'll get something else that's even better than that. And you just keep going and going, and then you're like, oh, three days went by and I never saw the sun. <laughs> well, it's kind of like that WoW factor. Like I don't remember if you've ever played WoW, but um, I played it for like just a few months. But you start out with like nothing. It's like, oh well, if I play you know an hour or two, I'll gain a level and then I get this new thing and. It's like, well, I just got to get to level 60. Level 60 is just, you know, the highest you can be. By the time you get there, well, guess what? A new expansion pack comes out, so it sucks out even mm-hmm. more time. Yeah. That's, I played that for about a month and um, with some guys from work, and it was one of those things that by the time you look at the actual amount of time you spent in it, it just you just have to – you can find something better to do, it feels like. Yeah, or at least you could find something better to do. Yeah, well, maybe not. I guess better to do may not be the right way to say it, but maybe something a little bit more productive. Yeah, I mean, I, and I, I mean, I'm not trying to knock. I mean, if that's a, if that's the way to spend your downtime, I mean, I am by far and no means any person to judge. My thing is just the, like it. It starts to get beyond downtime and and bleed into other aspects of my life. Is my problem. It, it's I mean it's a great way if I have like an hour to kill like that was one of the things I liked about uh, about Skyrim was because you could pick it up and you could do like a quest and it took maybe half an hour and then you could put it down and walk away and you didn't have that this itch or at least that's the way it was for me I didn't have this itch to be like well I'll just do one more quest what let's just, you know I could I could play it for a little bit and feel a sense of satisfaction when I was done, and it was fine. I don't know. But yeah, Diablo 3, you just run around, and you kill things, and you take it shit, and it never ends. Because then once you, be- once you beat it, then they have Nightmare Mode, and then after Nightmare Mode is Inferno Mode, and it, and it just keeps going, and go and I just, I can't, it just, it eats too much of my time. Yeah, it's kind of, um, I don't get into too, I, I mean, I've played uh, like Skyrim and those, um, but I get really into more like sports games, because that, that gives you kind of a set time of, you know, this game lasts from here to here, then you're done. Yeah. Um, so it kind of gives you that hour, hour 15 of time to, you know, play your game, finish, and then you've, you've accomplished something. Um, Skyrim, um, great game, loved it. My problem is I stepped away for a little bit. And like this happened to me like two or three times. I I finished like I didn't play it for a few months. I'd come back, start playing, and I'd be playing for like an hour, you know, maybe an hour fifteen. And I'd be like, well, I don't really need to save yet. You know, let me finish this little spot, and then you know, be fine. <laughs> sure enough, you die and you lose all that stuff you've done. Yeah. You'd be like kind of a rage quit scenario. And you're just like, fuck this, quit and call it good. 
Yeah, yeah. I could, I, um, yeah. Rage quit. I've always loved the rage quit. Rage quits are, are one of the fun things I like to see on the internet. Is you, you see someone just like pound on their keyboard. <laughs> <laughs> I saw one that some kid did it in German, and it was it was it was hilarious. Put but, some metal music to it. And yeah. Then perfect. Yeah. One thing uh, you were saying about WoW, I can I can say that I've never gotten into WoW. I I sat down in front of World of Warcraft and I played it for a tops maybe like four hours, and it just wasn't doing it for me. I don't know. I I think it was just the it I I in those four hours I could already see. I'm like this is going to be a lot of tedious exercises, to which. I am just going to either get frustrated because I'm not really doing anything or frustrated because the me the the piddly things that I am doing is not fulfilling me. I don't know, that's uh. Yeah, they do. It's it's one of those things where with that it's like it gets really tedious, but then every month they have something a little different. So it's just enough spice to be like, oh, well, it's October, so it's Headless Horseman month. Uh, you know, so so you can spend the whole month trying to get you get something from him when he drops whatever or when you fight him. And he only spawns every like 15 minutes in certain areas. And so they do those kind of things to like like, well, I, you know, I'm going to quit this month, but it's like, well, it's December, it's, you know, the Winter Solace or it's the Winter Festival or whatever. It's like, I I'm going to stay on just to do that. And it's just enough of like a little tease to keep you in it and um, it seems like a lot of people at work when they get to the point where they're like, "Yeah, I'm I'm completely done." It's like, "Oh, a new expansion pack's coming out." It's like, "Well, I'll stay on a little bit, see yeah, what this is yeah, like." Yeah. I That's can only I'm imagine saying. like the the arguments that like in households, be like, "Babe, oh, yeah. babe, I can't quit. It's Headless Horseman Month." Yeah, I know. F- or just like people screaming at each other, "Fuck you! It's Winter Solstice." <laughs> awesome. Uh, I th- there's a there's a guy at work that plays a lot, and he got his wife hooked into it, so that's kind of his end. So he, like she plays it just as much as he does. Um, so that's that's probably the best way to avoid fights. Yeah, but, I will say like my wife got into into Skyrim, and like I would get home. There was one night. There was one day I was at work, and I get this text in the middle of work, and she's like, "You need to call me right now, right now." And I'm thinking like you know one of the kids fell over and like <laughs> cracked their head open and. You know, so I call her and I'm like, "What's the matter?" She's like, "I killed my first dragon." <laughs> I'm like, "Are you kidding me? It's the middle of the afternoon, and it's didn't." I was like, "Why didn't you just text me that you killed the dragon?" Well, I thought it'd be better if I told you. <laughs> it's it's more of an event. Rich, it was a fucking dragon, man. <laughs> She's like, "Can you take screenshots?" I'm like, "No, you <laughs> can't take screenshots." Although uh, cell phone pictures work out pretty well for that. Yeah. Um, I was playing uh, Grand Theft Auto. Uh, is it is five the new one out or is it four? Five. 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 Uh, I was playing it, and I came out of the strip club, and I had a bike and a motorcycle, and somehow there was a glitch, and my uh, car was backed up onto my bike. <laughs> so I was like, that's picture worthy. <laughs> that game was actually pretty sweet. I don't know if you've played it. I haven't. I have Grand Theft Auto f- 3, 4, or 5. Oh wow, that was that was the like the first game I really started playing was that and Max Payne. So I've kind of that's kind of like my game when because when I was younger I had a Super Nintendo, but uh, I never really was a big gamer. It was just mostly like wrestling games and sports, mm-hmm. and then I kind of skipped out on the PlayStation and ended up getting the PS2 like towards the end of its life. Oh, I um, see. And so I've never really I've never been a big gamer. So it's kind of like Grand Theft Auto was the thing, the first real game that I played. Um, so those are always kind of a, a soft spot for me. But in this one, they had those three three players you could play, and you basically could uh, hop out of any one at any time. Okay. I, I thought it wouldn't be that cool of an idea, but it actually worked out pretty well. Um, what was nice about it is like you'd finish something, like something would happen real quick with one of them. You're like, well, I don't really want to quit right now. I kind of want to keep playing, but I don't really feel like playing this guy. Bounce out, go to the other one. You can get another good 15, 20 minutes in. It kind of helped that boredom factor, so you didn't feel like you were just trugging through something. Right, right. I yeah, I I, it, I. It's not that the game seemed unappealing to me. They seemed extremely appealing. It just, I don't know. The, the thing, the thing with a video game is, especially now, like you're shelling out sixty dollars, and for me, 
sixty dollars worth of game it demands a lot. It ha- I, I mean I if I'm shelling out sixty bucks for something, I'm I'm asking a lot of it, and it's not that you know games don't deliver. It's you know it's the fear that they won't deliver mm-hmm. is the reason I don't touch a lot of them, and that's I'm. I mean, it's sad to say, but I mean, and I think that a lot of, I think that a lot of game developers, I mean, it's, and it has nothing, it's not their fault because they're making, they're making high end quality products, but with that price point, and it's a price point that they can't avoid, with that price point, it alienates a lot of mainstream customers because $60 is a lot of money. Yeah. Do you have like a, because, I mean, I feel the same way. Like, there's some games you get, and, you know, it's like 15, 20 hours tops, and that just that seems completely worthless. Like, you basically spent $3 per hour playing it. So I always kind of break things down, like, okay, how much did it cost me per hour? Yeah, it, yeah, I do that, too. I do that, too. What, mean, was, you, what was the worst one for you? Worst um, worst game that you ever either bought or got as a gift? That you, that, like, that you, that you played it, and you were just like, what? did i do what is this this is terrible oh i think it would have been one of the uh kill zones i think like kill zone 2 i started playing it and it was not that great i i've only really i think i could probably count the number of games i've actually beat on my like both hands um yeah it would probably have been that kill zone 2 it was a little rough Did, which what would be your game oh this is so sad um I had an extra twenty bucks, and I bought the Da Vinci Code. Mm. That was that was terrible. The reason I bought it was because I looked at it and I said, "Well, they're offering a free movie ticket with the game," <laughs> so I'm like, "Well," I was like, "It's about like you know, seven eight bucks for a movie ticket." I was like, "So really, I'm spending like thirteen bucks for a game." Yeah, you know, whatever. I'll go for it. Oh, it was terrible. It was so bad so bad i remember playing uh, i read the book i loved the book i mean the movie was okay i mean movies are what they are especially if you've read the book but oh the game was terrible and i remember i went to go trade it in at gamestop and i think i got like a dollar fifty for it oh geez yeah i've always kind of stayed away from i don't know if i've ever played one but whenever there's a, a movie tie into a video game i always just try to stay away just that's the general rule yeah I've kind of learned that with comic books, too. It seems like if there's a comic book based on a TV show or a movie, to just kind of stay away from it, too. Um, I got the... Uh, um, there's a Dexter coming out from Marvel, and I got it expecting it to be some kind of... At least inside the canon, and it was it was way off. Like, it made no sense whatsoever. Now, I mean, was it was it trying to recreate the story, or was it trying to tell a different story in that universe it was just a different story in that universe um because they kind of picked it up where he went to um because you've seen all have you seen all those shows? i haven't i'm it's one of those shows that i'm i'm saving to just bin wa- binge watch like beginning to end and i can't i do that one but right now i'm doing game of thrones so nice yeah we'll have to have some good discussions about game of thrones i actually just finished the uh um current book that's out and it's really really good um, but what it was is, so it started out with, uh, cause in the sh- TV show, he goes back to his, um, high school reunion, but in the, uh, comic, they send him back to his high school reunion too. And it's like completely like, it's, you know, you only have one high school reunion every five or 10 years. So right, it's right. Like, it just, just didn't make any sense. And the characters didn't look like the characters from the show. So it's really hard to know. It's like, oh, okay, is this guy Dexter? Or is this somebody else? Is this, this person or is this somebody other person? And. Um, it just didn't make any sense. I think they've already. Well, I think the way I think it just depends on how you do it. Because I mean, if I understand, like I said, I, like, like with Game of Thrones, I'm only, I'm only, I'm just about ready to. Fi- I'm, I will probably finish season one tonight. So I'm like, I'm way, way behind. But I did mm-hmm. that intentionally because. I I'm I'm a binge watcher. I don't like I don't like to go week to week. I like to you know take a whole thing and just plow. Like mm-hmm. I plowed through Breaking Bad in probably like you know a week and a half, beginning to end. And that's just the way that's just the way I like to watch watch TV or anything. 
But like with Game of Thrones, the way I understand it is that a lot of times actors have changed roles in the show. Like characters that w- were played by one actor get played by another actor later on down the road and you don't they don't explain that or they don't acknowledge it or anything. So it it's hard. I've heard some people say that it, it makes it h- even harder to keep track, especially considering the way the story bounces around. Mm-hmm. Are you talking just in general or for like Game of Thrones? Well, ju- yeah, just, just for Game of just Thrones. Oh. You know, Game of Thrones, there's just a crap ton of characters. Uh, I, uh, I watched the first two seasons before I started reading the books. And then I jumped into the books, and if I would have went to the books first, like it, I would have had to like read extremely slow and carefully, and probably have to map out characters because there's just so many and they're so complex. Yeah. Even when I picked up the first season um, and started watching it, it was, I mean, it was really overwhelming. It took me like half the season just to kind of figure out what was going on. Yeah, it did. Yeah, the same for me. It was probably about like episode like five or six. I was like, okay, this is that. This is you know, he's that. He's that. He's with this house. He's with that house. These people hate each other. These people really like each mm-hmm. other. Yeah, it took it took me probably like five or six episodes just to understand who was what and what the dynamics were between who and what. And if you're interested, I'll have to lend you those books because they're they're extremely well written. You know, he types those on a DOS. He types those yeah. out on DOS. That's why it takes him so long to come out with new books. It's awesome because, uh, and the reason he does that is because uh, with all the other word processors, they like basically have you know like capitalized things and whatnot. And uh, he's like, "Well, I don't want to capitalize that. If I wanted to capitalize it, I would have made it capital." Hmm. So it's pretty interesting. He's he seems like a really interesting guy. Yeah, there was an interview I was gonna listen to of his, but I haven't I haven't gotten around to it. Um. It's because uh, those books. I don't know if you've looked at the timeline on those. I think the first one was uh, written in '96, and then it was like a three-year break until the second one came out, and it was like three or four years, and three or four or five more years for the next one. So, like, if you started reading those in '96 and you're like 20, you're going to be in your like 50s to mid 50s by the time it's finished. Yeah. How many? Is, well, he is. He's just about ready to come out with a new one, like within the next year or two, isn't he? Or within the next year, I thought. It should be. It's um, it's kind of uh, up in the air when it'll be done. Uh, I think because uh, uh, people keep asking him, I think it, it should be pretty soon. But there's just two more left. Um, there's rumors that he's going to basically make a th- make three more, so it's going to be eight books instead of seven. But mm-hmm. he kind of disproved or didn't disprove that. But he uh, went against that pretty recently, saying that no, he's he's only got two more books in him. But it was funny, too, because there's another interview I read where he's talking, and he said that he's really excited to wrap all this up so we can move on to new things. And, like, three or four of the things he mentioned were all, like, based in this uh, Game of Thrones uh, realm. Oh, okay. So it was just different stories, but it was pretty cool. Well, I mean, yeah, I, I honestly, I do the same thing. I mean, like, if I spend, you know, tw- you know, 20 years or so creating this entire setting, I mean, you're damn sure I'm beating the shit out of that horse heck yeah well he uh i mean like i was asking somebody because everybody compares him to tolkien and tolkien wrote like 30 books in his realm yeah in middle earth um i mean there's tons of stories there i mean you can go in the past you can go in the future um i mean it's endless you can do whatever you want and you can start commissioning out stories to other people to write if you really wanted to kind of star wars in where they have people well he, um, he kind of did that like his his son finished his last book, the the the, the book before he died, the Summerillion, like his son did, some of the finish finishing touches on the book before it was published, and I mean I, I mean there's all sort. I mean you take you can take anything, especially nowadays you can take anything and you can see fan fiction. I mean I don't oh, know, how how much fan fiction have you seen about you know Frodo like just banging the crap out of yeah. Sam. <laughs> Uh, I, I haven't looked it up in weeks, but you know, <laughs> that's the internet for you. Let you do whatever you want, and let you then let anybody sleep with anybody they want <laughs> in the theater of our minds. So, uh, just uh, went and saw X Men last night. You saw? Yeah, I I haven't seen X Men. I did go see Godzilla because. 
that's 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 a childhood thing for me. I was I was probably six years old the first time I saw Godzilla on but TV. I thought, I thought Godzilla came out in like ninety eight or ninety nine. Oh, oh, here we go. No, <laughs> we're not doing no, <laughs> no, we're not doing that. That wasn't Godzilla. That was I don't know. That was Jurassic Park for the Raptors take Manhattan. I don't know what the <laughs> hell that movie was. I just, it. Ferris Bueller was in it. <laughs> I don't. I, there was a meme that had like old Godzilla, um, the one from the Mathroom Erotic thing, and then the new Godzilla, and it said something like, uh, "Real monsters have curves." Because the Matthew Broderick one, I guess, was a little bit more slimmer. So, so were you a fan of uh, the new, the new Godzilla? I'm sorry, say that one more time. Were you, uh, were you a fan of the new Godzilla? Did you like it? The, the, the um, the one that just came out. Yeah, it yeah, actually yeah. wasn't bad. It was because, I mean, I'm, I'm not totally sure, but I'm pretty sure they had at one point they had a, a guy in a rubber suit. Oh, really? Like I mean, I couldn't totally tell, but I'm pretty sure I'm seeing. I'm I'm looking at the shot, and I'm like, that's there's somebody in a fucking Godzilla costume. <clears throat> but have you done any looking to see if they've uh, said that they did that or anything? Uh no, I haven't. I haven't looked at it. But I mean, yeah, I mean, six years old, the old the old black and white Godzilla, the the American version, the one with Raymond Burr. I'm not, you know, I'm not. I, I can't call myself a purist that like watched Gojira when I was Yeah, yeah. No, I watched the old I mean it was, you know, fifties or sixties, I'm pretty sure it was sixties with Raymond Burr. And it was I mean, it, yeah, I was you're captivated. It's like it's like King Kong where you actually towards the end you sympathize for the monster. Mm-hmm. Which is a hard thing to get an audience to do, especially especially then it's a hard thing to get an audience to sympathize with the creature that's terrorizing people and killing people but it happens i don't know how it happens but it happens and then later they make him like you know later on when they release more movies they make him like the defender of earth basically you know (laughs) he's fighting giant moths and he's fighting three-headed dragons and he's you know um so so they've always kind of made him like that kind of like the defender of the people i guess or the balancer of power well and i mean the first one it's just i mean the very first one it's just basically he shows up he destroys tokyo and then he leaves and then they kill him i don't think i need to say spoilers for the first one because this thing came out like 60 years ago if you haven't yeah. seen the original godzilla 60 years ago i'm, I'm sorry the, the <laughs> i think the i think the the expiration date on saying spoilers for black and white godzilla i think that time has passed I'd say you got like a twenty year window. If you you have anything twenty years ago, maybe, but beyond twenty years, yeah, you probably should have seen it. Exactly, exactly. By the way, in uh, Breakfast Club, the never mind. No, I'll leave that alone. <laughs> it but, was all a dream. <laughs> and all of a sudden, Mario wakes up, and you're like, "Where did that? That who came first? I oh." But um, yeah, so. <laughs> It's just just imagine Mario putting lipstick between his huge boobs and yeah. I said Mario, not the whatever the girl was. I don't know Molly Ringwald. Yeah, whoever yeah. Molly Ringwald was, I can't think of the name. Uh, but no, so, so yeah, the first black and white Godzilla shows up, destroys Tokyo, leaves, and whatever. But after that, they basically make him like the defender of Earth. Like they, you know, other monsters come up and they terrorize the city. But then Godzilla shows up and kills the monster for some you know and nobody can really figure out why they just they're like what you know but he does he shows up and he kills whatever other monster is now destroying the city that he just destroyed he's like no that's mine i don't i don't know i don't know what he does but it's good tv exactly but i mean there's tons of movies where you know where that's what he does and they 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 can't i mean when i was a kid they they actually had a cartoon of Godzilla. They had you know where Godzilla showed up and you know saved the day for a bunch of English speaking children and <laughs> everybody was happy. But no, I mean, and I this last this one that just came out. I mean, it was I'd say it was it it gave you that sense of you know that Godzilla was. A terror to behold, but there's there's other qualities to it as well. Plus, Brian Cranston's in it, so 
Yeah. Uh, spoilers on that. Uh, but, yeah, I expect him to be in the movie a little bit longer than what he was. So did I. I sat in the theater. Because you see the trailer, and he's all over the trailer. Yeah. Like, he's all over it. But then you're, you're watching the movie, and then you're you're going, what, where, th- you know, they, they pull the zipper, and you're like, what? That's he's, not him, is it? He's, is that it? Is is this is this all we're getting at a at a Walter White? No, <laughs> no, all right, okay. I honestly was thinking like, well, maybe they. F- I'm, I'm sitting there in my in my brain trying to like run it through. I'm like, well, maybe they faked his death because <laughs> that way his son would leave and then he could you know spend time researching the monster with the with the Japanese guys. And I, this this is a scenario that went through my head. I'm trying to think, what other? I guess. Uh I'm trying to think of the big monster movies that I know of. Um, I'm guessing really the only one that I've really seen is Cloverfield and then uh, the Jurassic Parks. But like you said, how they uh, kind of humanize, or not really humanize, but the I, – well, I guess they kind of do humanize the the, the beasts. Um, like in Jurassic Park, I mean, you kind of see uh, the T-Rex kind of being humanized, and then the later ones, they kind of do that with the raptors. Um I guess Cloverfield's probably one I think of off the top of my head. Yeah, but I didn't really. yeah. Cloverfield is just kind of the monster was the monster. The Cloverfield was more about, I think it was more about telling the story from that street, that eye level, street level point of view. Mm-hmm. I don't think it was really so much about the monster attack in and of itself, but. Kind of like a Walking Dead, almost, where it's a, it's kind of like showing you how you the people react to it instead of the actual, yeah, exactly, actual thing that's causing the issues. Exactly, exactly. But yeah, with I mean, yeah, with Godzilla, there was more. Like I said, I I guess the closest thing I could compare it to would probably be like King Kong, where, you know, by the time you get to the end of King Kong, there's mm-hmm. there's a there's a pity. And I mean, I mean, I don't even know if it's pity. It's there's there's a sympathy for this gigantic effing gorilla, like Mighty Joe Young. Did you? Okay, <laughs> but yeah. Let's go with Mighty Joe. Young. <laughs> uh, yes, it's exactly like Mighty Joe Young. <laughs> he was a big, big ape. I mean, he wasn't King Kong, but <laughs> that's true. At least I didn't say Airbud. <laughs> That's true. I was I was going I thought you were gonna go with like Harry and the Hendersons. Oh, Harry and the Hendersons. I love that movie. <laughs> That's a good one though. Uh it's funny. But there's a crap ton of good movies coming out this summer though. Um I said I just saw the uh the X Men. Um Dawn of Planet of the Apes is coming out. Oh yeah, yeah. Guardians of the Galaxy will be out. Um, that the one, new Tom. Cr- that oh. movie's gonna make millions. Oh yeah, it's. Um, they've done a really good job with that. Just how they set it up and marketed it, and it's been what three, four years since the last one, um, if not more. It's been three. Well, okay. no, since since the last Marvel. Oh, oh, I thought we were going with Guardians of the Galaxy. Oh no, no, I meant uh, the Dawn of the or yeah. Dawn of Planet of the Apes. Yeah, I want. Yeah, it's about three years, two at least two. Because typically, what we see with those when they try to redo those franchises, it's like they come out with it, and then like quickly, there's a new one, and then another one, another one. Well, I think they probably did. I I I got the impression that they didn't expect Dawn of the Planet of the Apes to do as well as it did, and I think that's why the sequel was kind of slow coming. Gotcha. It was one of those they were trying to see how it would do. And they were like, oh, this this movie made money. I That's awesome. Yeah. Fuck, fuck yeah. Make another one. Make five. <laughs> make five. We'll have Dawn of the Planet of the Rise of the Planet of the Beginning Apes. Dusk of Planet of right? the Apes. Twilight of the Planet of the Apes. Oh. Yeah, you put Twilight in there and it's going to be huge. Is this the new Twilight? And you get those kids just kind of accidentally walking in. And and it's just apes throwing glitter on each other. <laughs> <laughs> look, uh, now you now you look pretty, too. <laughs> or like one's throwing glitter on it, and then the other one's like, no! <laughs> <laughs> just a lone Team Edward shirt somewhere. Wait a minute. <laughs> These aren't wolves. <laughs> 
Well, at least I got popcorn. <laughs> <laughs> I have found that uh, the best movie night so far, at least here in Columbia, has been Wednesday nights. I don't know if it's church night or what it is, but uh been going there for the last three or four movies I went and seen, and we just go on Wednesday night, and there's like six people in the whole theater, so it's perfect. Yeah, yeah. I, it depend, to me, it depends on the movie. Like, if I'm going to see, like, um, if I, I, for me, if I was going to see something like X-Men or The Avengers, like, I like sitting in a completely packed theater. Like, if mm-hmm. it's like, like The Avengers, like, the first time I saw The Avengers, it was, it was a midnight show, and, like, the theater's full, and there's people in costume, and, and it's... I, I like that kind of setting. I did that with uh, with Dark Knight Rises, and I'll t- that movie needed all the help it could get. Yeah, I did that with uh, a with Avengers with, and it's there's a there's a palpable energy you get, and it's it's kind it's infectious when you see all these people in costume and they're excited and they're you know they're excited that you know this movie that has these characters that they've loved for years and. You know they're they're gonna see them. They're gonna see them on screen, and they're gonna be doing badass shit. And it it gets you. It it is. It's infectious. It gets you pumped. And the thing, the beautiful thing of, that I've had in my movie experiences with with that is is when the movie's actually going like before the movie, everybody's crazy and running mm-hmm. around and whatever. But when the actual movie starts, it's dead silence. Oh yeah. At it's, least, except in like the right parts, where like. Well, yeah, I mean, you know, there's the laughs when there's the laughs, and 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 when there's references that you know are kind of subtle to pick up on, you hear it kind of like throughout the, it kind of like it's like a rolling whisper that goes through yeah. like a wave. But I think uh, I've had bad luck with like midnight showings, though. Um, I don't know if we talked about this before, but like I saw like Pirates of the Caribbean 3 and then we went together to see Spider-Man 3. I I I was I think we the, I think we just picked bad movies. Yeah. To see oh Spider-Man 3. Oh, uh, that was a rough one. Oh god. I think uh, when he started dancing I was like I can think that's when we looked at each other I was like do you just want to leave? <laughs> that's what I was got to thinking too. And we look over at Kevin and Kevin's just got this big smile on his face and he's all excited. Walk out of the theater's like that was the greatest movie ever. Oh, so I remember, like, did you have, did you have, did were you with somebody? Did you have somebody with you aside from me? Because I remember I had my wife with me. I don't think so, but I can't remember. Because I remember, like, I walked out and, bo- and, and, and Kevin was like, wow, that was amazing. Huh? <laughs> and then I look at you and I was just like, you know, he danced in that movie. <laughs> and that hair. Oh, my God, uh, that hair. That's just, uh. Like oh look, uh, I, I mean I was just expecting like a My Chemical Romance track to play while he was, and then have him like walking down the street, you know, jamming out to like My Chemical Romance or insert emo band here. God, and it was just uh, he had the most awesome villain ever. Oh, I know. Yeah, and 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 it was it was squandered. Yeah, squandered and sullied. That's what, because uh, uh, the theater we go by, they have all four of the Ninja Turtle posters lined up right by the exit, and I'm so excited. I think I'm probably going to go to a midnight showing if they have one, but it's just... For those that don't know, Sean is completely obsessed with the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. He's obsessed with a lot of things. He's very infectious. He gets he gets jazzed about things, and he gets really freaked out about things, but <laughs> Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles is one of those things. So if you if you hear a little quiver in his voice... <laughs> That's that's why. Anyway, continue. Well, well, I'm only wearing my my turtle shirt, my turtle uh, pajama bottoms. I, my turtle underwear is getting clean, so. Uh, but I do have my turtle mask on, obviously. No, obviously. <laughs> but I mean, the trailer looks all right. You should just leave your windows open and just people just ride by. And be like, <laughs> why is Donatello? Why is Donatello sitting in a pool? And why does he look so angry? <laughs> uh. I uh I did get Tiffany. Well, I didn't get her this, but we've talked about doing this for Halloween. Um, they have like the slutty turtle costumes. Uh, getting her a Raphael one, and then I want to get like a Casey Jones set up and go as Casey Jones. See, I'm, she, it's the, it's the mental imagery right now because 
I'm picturing Casey Jones fucking Raphael. <laughs> like you would think the obvious choice would be, oh, one goes as April O'Neil and then the other one goes as a turtle. But no, no. Not- Maybe that would be a better costume. Maybe I should go as April O'Neil. That might not be too bad. Or, or, or you could have her as April because she has the breasts. That's true. That's true. I don't. Uh, I was gonna say there's probably not a slutty April O'Neil outfit, but obviously there's gonna be a slutty April O'Neil outfit out there somewhere. And if there is, God, you know, I know you'll find it. <laughs> but the thing is, is honestly, I think what you should do is just go with Raphael and Casey Jones, and then just be completely inappropriate with each other at parties. <laughs> well, at least I mean, like, it's just a, make it's a everybody uncomfortable. <laughs> It would be worse if she went like in actual like a male uh, Raphael costume. How uh, can you tell the difference? Oh, you can tell the difference if you Google it. It's I mean it's um it's like a skirt instead of like a pants and mm-hmm. then like it's a you got the turtle shell but it's like a it's very feminine. See, so now I'm just picturing like a ninja turtle in a skirt. <laughs> Beefed up, can't even tell if it's a girl or not. I'm a princess. <laughs> I'm a pretty princess. <laughs> yes, you are. <laughs> Yeah, we've we've talked about doing that for a while, but it's one of those things. Halloween comes around, we're both like, "Do you really want to go out?" It's like, no. It's like, all right, well, let's watch Rocky Horror Picture Show. My daughter loves that movie. I've gotten her into that movie. It's a good flick. It's a good. Um, we had people over uh, a couple of years ago because I got the anniversary edition. And it has in like in the corner, it'll pop up like with what you're supposed to do. Yeah, yeah, I've so gotten that too. Bought all that stuff, and then. Uh, have you ever been to an actual show where they do that? No, I want to. Here in town, they do it, I think they do it like two or three times a year. They do it right around Halloween, and they do it uh, six months to Halloween. It's like the halfway to Halloween Rocky Horror Picture Show night. Yeah, they, they do. There's a there's a guy I know. He used to own a business in town, but uh, in the he, used to, he has them in his basement, and he's got this giant, like, you know, 60, 70 inch screen and you know with a projector and and he'll put the movie on he's got it's, it's almost like it's a basically it's a small theater seats about like maybe 20 25 and he, he invites people over and you know we usually it's nice because you get to bring drinks so we mm-hmm. you know sit and you know like i last time i went i think i went through like a bottle and a half of wine and just yelling at the screen and other people are yelling and it's it's a good time do you know all the stuff to do just from from watching it, or do you? Well, the, do they see, have that's the, the thing is there's there's different versions, like you know, it's it there's different versions and there's different things to say, and it it kind of varies, and, and I think that's kind of the beauty thing of it is like you just sit there and you hear other people say stuff, and there, or you see something and you just you can just can just pull something just out of your ass, up. <laughs> yeah, just make stuff up. <laughs> Who cares? It's like, you sucked in Bull Durham, and everybody looks at you and it's like, that was after this was made. <laughs> you know what, Bull Durham? You see her boobs. That's true. It's a, it's a little down blousey kind of look, but she still looks pretty good for age, even though she's kind of crazy. Uh, I, you know what? I, I, I embrace crazy. That's just little, me. Yeah. A little crazy is not too bad. But again, see, there you go. Rocky is a monster who was created in a lab. Yeah. And then you find sympathy for him. See? Uh, yeah, he let's see. Who gets killed in that? Is it Bon Jovi that gets killed or is it yeah, it's Bon Jovi that gets killed in that? No, it's Meatloaf. Not Bon Jovi, Meatloaf. Meatloaf. Um we were just down on our trip and there was a bar where they're playing like weird music and uh Meatloaf was playing in the background. It wasn't like one of his big songs, it was just just one of his songs. And uh, it took me a second. I'm like, where the hell did I? What? Why does this voice sound familiar? And somebody said his name. I'm like, oh, not really have an urge to watch a Rocky Horror Picture Show. <laughs> yeah, one song on there, he, and yeah, not a lot of screen time, mm-hmm. but he was awesome. Rode around on a motorcycle, had little yeah. love and hate tattoos on his knuckles. Can't beat it. Was he in any other movies, or is that is that the only one he's really been um, in? He. As an actor, I think he's been in a few. I can't think of any other ones off the top of my head, but I know he's been in more than one. Okay. I always just remember his videos being very cinematic as well. Oh, yeah. Well, his his earlier videos were more like concert videos. Like, you look at the videos for, oh, like, okay. Paradise by the Dashboard Light or Two Out of Three Ain't Bad, and, and it was more like, they're more like concert videos. But, I mean, even, 
his, I mean, he emotes with his face when he sings. I mean, you could, I mean, it's almost like he's like reaching down from his soul and like just raw. He's, he's bearing this shit. He's bringing the pain. Bad out of hell. That's an awesome uh, name for an album, too. Yeah. So it was so much so that he made in the second one Bad Out of Hell too because he's like I can't beat it. Yeah. <laughs> Things called Bad Out of Hell. Like how how do you top that? Bad Out of Hell too. Back into hell. <laughs> Bat into hell. Yeah. Uh, mercy. So anyway, so X-Men. <laughs> X-Men. It was pretty good. Uh not too much to spoil it, but um but yeah, it was good. It's worth watching in the theater, I think. Um, I always think it's real interesting, uh, just because you have different studios owning different Marvel rights, um, and so you get like shows like X Men, where they probably could do some type of tie with the Avengers, but they can't because of studio. The way ownership. I understand this, and I mean, I'm not totally sure if this is right, but the way I understand that agreement is that it's is it Sony? Is Sony the one that owns X Men? Sony owns Spider Man, and I think it's uh, Fox. Fox, yeah, yeah. Fox owns Fox X-Men. owns X Men. The way I understand the agreement with Fox is is that as long as Fox continues to make movies with that features the X Men, then they retain the rights to the X Men. Gotcha. So once a, a a period of time lapses that they haven't made a, a movie with the X Men then those rights revert back to Marvel. And I think this is the reason that we got X3, The Last Stand. Yeah. Which was a terrible movie. Well, even the uh, the X-Men Origin Wolverine was uh, just yeah, terrible. Yeah. It was rough. X-Men Origin Wolverine n- was, was pretty rough. Uh, the one that came out last summer, th- just The Wolverine, uh, that one mm. I haven't seen. So it was good. Was it wasn't it? it wasn't too bad. Um uh I saw it in theaters and I mean it was worth going to see. Um the uh I saw uh the X Men first class just on a laptop and watched it there and that was pretty good. That was pretty good. That was pretty good. But I do like how they've kind of kept uh, all the characters as the same people and have kind of tied all those stories together so it hasn't gone, so they're not independent of each other. Because that's what I always really like is when we have stories that all tie together. Um, I'm trying to think of like movies that, like I guess Jurassic Park, just going back to it, you know, each movie is basically its own thing. And there's not really like a big overlapping story, but with the X-Men, they've kind of kept everything in that same universe, that same lineage. Right, right. Which, which I don't know. It seems like, like I would say it seems. I got the impression that the way Days of Future, uh, the way Days of Future Past that I've seen, like just in trailers or whatnot or or clips that I've seen, it seems like they don't really put X three in there in that list of. Oh yeah, that that X three that that totally happened. Um, it seems like th- it's almost like it's the ugly stepsister that they lock in a closet, and they're like, "Well, yeah, I mean that one's there, but we're not gonna we're not gonna really look at it." <laughs> there was something that happened in a third episode. We don't know what it was. You know, I think was, I, some people died. I don't know. Maybe uh, who does it? Doesn't matter. I mean, it doesn't matter. Look, look, we have Fassbender playing Magneto. <laughs> like, look at that. Don't. It's all misdirection. <laughs> Pay no attention to the. But they even kind of stuck the dagger in a little deeper. They're like, well, look, look, uh, Wolverine's going to get his own movie called X-Men Origin Wolverine. It's like, ah, just push it in a little further. Yeah. yeah. But they've kind of, I think they've kind of fixed what they screwed up. And it's on a decent path now, I think. Yeah. First class looked good. And I am curious to see, to see Days of Future Past. Especially now that I'm into Game of Thrones because uh, they got What's-His-Face playing uh, Trask. The, uh, the 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 imp. Oh yeah yeah. Uh, what is his name? Peter Dinklage. Peter Dinklage. That's it. Yeah, he does a really good job. He's a he's an awesome actor. I think he does a good job. With, you know, on Game of Thrones as the as Tyrion, and then uh, just in that show as well, he did he did a good job. Yeah. So that one I'm gonna see. I'll probably see it. Uh, who knows? Hopefully within the next couple weeks. Hey, you have to let me know what you think. I will. So. 
Uh, you said you've been watching Game of Thrones. What do you think of that? Well, like I said, I'm about like a two, ep- I think two episodes from the end of the first season. So I just got done watching everything go completely crazy mm-hmm. in the in the first season. Like every like you know, kind of, nah, 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 and then and then things happen, and you know, I, I, I'll go for it. And in in I mean, you know, it's the first season. I'm sorry. Anyway, spoilers. What <laughs> happens is when like I I just got done watching where Robert dies and mm. uh uh Ned goes up to try and, you know, claim the throne and then the queen basically, you know, rips that up and he's in Ned's in the dungeon and you know, Rob's marching in from the north to try and take him down and so that's where I'm at. I'm I'm, I'm just, like I said I'm just about ready to finish that first season off. But honestly, the the people that are my my per, my fan favorites here for me are uh is uh Khaleesi and uh and Drago. Yeah, those yeah, they're both pretty awesome. She's uh uh Khaleesi's just a great great character. I mean, he it's she's just perfect for what she is. Yeah. And just even as the story goes, it just gets better and better. Yeah, yeah. And, oh, and all um, and then Drago. I don't know if it was because of Game of Thrones, but Drago ended up doing that uh, that Conan the Barbarian remake. Yeah, I think I saw bits and pieces of that. I can't remember if that was after or Which before. Which could have been such a good movie. It looked great, and the story was kind of there. And there was, a, to me, honestly, like I think they could have made it bigger. And done so, they could have done so much more. And I think that they just didn't trust it. They, I think they didn't trust the story because that they could have done so much more with so because they, you know, showcase all these great places and they showcase all these nice, all these characters. And I think they could have expanded on it and just made it amazing. And he wasn't bad as Conan. I like, I, I liked him as Conan. Did he have? Did he do a lot of speaking in that? Because I know in Game of Thrones he doesn't have a ton of speaking parts, but and, and the he one he does, it's not in English. Yeah, I, he it was he sp- he spoke more than I would. I mean, obviously more than than Schwarzenegger did in the one okay. in the seventies. And I mean, to me, the original Conan the Barbarian, like that was that was that's your ultimate man movie right there. <laughs> I love how we've had this discussion before, and I always made that 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 show always felt very homoerotic to me. I think it's because I saw um, the Beastmaster first, oh. and so I basically associated those two together. Ooh. And because uh, I remember you always tell me, it's like, oh no, there's an orgy and there's boobs everywhere. Yeah, there's orgies and there's you know, all, all chicks are showing off their. I think he he sleeps with like four people in that movie. <laughs> oh, hang on. one, two, three. He sleeps with at least three people in that movie. <laughs> An hour and a half, one movie, sleeps with three people, and the, he's just totally, he's whatever, yeah, I'm doing it, so what? <laughs> is there much uh, uh, gratuitousness in the uh, new one, or is it pretty tame? I don't totally recall, I it I think it was gorier, I mean, I, I, I'm i pretty sure it was rated R, so oh, wow. it was gory, and I think there was a little bit of sex in it, but... Okay. Um, I don't. Th- it was all right. It was. It was okay, but I think they could have they could have done a lot more. It was it was good for what it was, but I think they could have done so much more with it, especially because, like, I mean, I mean, because those there's tons of books on that, and that's a, I mean that's a whole world. Because did they make did Schwarzenegger make two movies out of that? Yeah, the second one was oh, the second one was it was rough. It was it was not that great. <laughs> not that great at all. I yeah, going going back to Game of Thrones, I think my favorite character is probably got to be Jon Snow. Um, just that kind of underdoggy type story. I think I've always kind of leaned towards that kind of stuff. So, I think um, that's why I like Tyrion. <laughs> yeah. Kind of the strong. Well, he's just kind of like you know, he's just kind of a smarty smart ass, and you know, he just but he's smart enough to get by with what he has, mm. and I find that admirable. Well, I think I don't know if he really says it for sure, but I mean, just kind of talks about how 
I mean, he was born a Lannister, so that's the only reason he's really alive. Otherwise, he would, you know, if he was born to any other family, they probably would have just dumped him in the water or dumped him in the woods because, you know, dwarfs are the bastards of, uh, what is, how does it say, like dwarves are the bastards of, or all ba- our do- all dwarfs are bastards in the eyes of their father or something like that. Oh, yeah, yeah, he says that at one point. But it's just, both those characters are pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. But uh, you had you had a bunch of things you wanted to talk about, and I, when we, I mean, we can, I mean, we we kind of, you know, meandered around. We don't have a whole bunch of time left, but I I know, okay, like earlier, how I was saying that that Sean has a propensity for getting <laughs> really excited about things and also getting really freaked out about things. He has a a growing list of irrational fears. And yes, they are irrational fears. <laughs> One of the irrational fears that he has is sharks. He hates sharks. He's very uh, scared of sharks. Have you ever evil have evil you ever seen have you ever seen a shark? Like, uh, I have. Uh, I've ha- touched two sharks in my life. You have tu- um, so you've actually like laid hands upon the beast. Yeah. So the very first time I ever did it was in. Uh, I felt its unclean skin. Uh, I'm gonna, not gonna lie. I was scared, and I'll tell you exactly how I felt. So we went to I was in Key West, and there was this uh, this kind of aquarium place, and they had like a really small pool. It was probably I don't know twenty thirty yards long, and maybe a foot or two deep, but it had a bunch of nurse sharks in there, and you were just walking right above them. So was this at the, the behest of your wife, the touching of uh, the shark? No, this was a uh, well. One of them is yes. The other one is uh, from a girlfriend from uh, from back in high school, or it was right at college. And so, like, my fear was as I was walking around is that I would trip and fall in, or somebody would push me in. Um, you know, kind of irrational, but you know, that's that's whatever. Well, but unless you outside, recognize it, that's yeah. I mean, you got to be prepared. You never know. They're like nurse sharks. You know, they don't they don't harm people, and I fall in and get devoured. It's like, have you ever heard of a feeding frenzy, fuckers? <laughs> I'm chum in here. I'm fucking chum. <laughs> Chum's going down. And so then you go outside and they have this uh, like kind of big cage and you can walk in like it's like a square shape and you're like maybe 30 feet above the water and they had a, it was a bigger shark. I can't remember what it was. But as I'm walking around, like I have this constant fear of like this thing's going to break and I'm going to fall in and I'm going to get eaten. Um. So because that happens all the time, I see that in the news. Yeah, I mean, and then the sharks grew legs and they became self-aware and they built Skynet and rise of the planet of the sharks that walk. Land shark, (laughs) Ganagram. But (laughs) so we get back inside and the guy carries around a shark and I touch it. And it was, I was like, okay, that's fine. But then my girlfriend's mom touches it. And right when she does it, like, starts flipping out, freaking out. And, you know, of course, me, I just, like, scream and run out of the room. <laughs> this is how it happens. <laughs> uh, the better story, though, uh, the last time I touched a shark, um, at the zoo in St. Louis, they have an aquarium. And they had a little baby hammerhead. And, like, instantly I ID where it's at. Like, I'm watching it the whole time. I mean, it's not more than maybe a foot long. Like, it's super small. Do you do do you do a little commentary with yourself like you're on a walkie-talkie like you're leading that like a SEAL team be like I've got eyes on the shark. All right, it's at about six o'clock right now. All right, all right, uh, okay, it's going. Uh, all right, it's going due south now. We should be in the clear. Should be in the clear. Oh shit! I just took a right turn. It's coming right for us. But so they had stingrays, and so I'm petting the stingrays, and I'm fine. Which you know probably should be more scared because you know that's how the crocodile hunter was killed. So, exactly. I mean, they're, they're Stabbed in the heart. Deadly. Pierced through the heart. <laughs> So I'm petting those, you know, eyes on the shark, and he kind of does a 180 and is coming around the side, and I'm watching him. He turns left, turns right, coming right our way, and he gets maybe three feet away from me, and Tiffany's hand's behind mine. I instinctively pull my hand away out of the water. Hers is still in there, and it just swims right by her. I was like, oh, okay. I was going to let it eat you and not me, but obviously that didn't happen. Um, So when it made another round, and I I petted it. Did you contemplate pushing her in to save yourself? (laughs) Yeah. Like the shark swimming up, and you just pull away, be like, "No, take her, sploosh." There's your chum. Love you. <laughs> Woman goes into Shark Tank. Woman <laughs> dies. 
It's like, is it nuzzling you? Quick, that's how they track you. <laughs> it's got yeah. your scent. That's the two time I've touched two that's that's the two times I've touched a shark. Um but kind of going on our movie talk, so there, there's a site I always check, and they always put, like, different shark things on there. So whenever there's, like, a shark attack thing, like, I look at it just to remind myself why I don't go in the ocean or go very far in the ocean. But there's a movie coming out um, called – I'm trying to remember what it's called real quick. Um, let's see. Because, of course, as a basis for, for everything that we consider to be real life, we use movies. Ooh, yeah. Well, that's why I'm scared of sharks. I mean, Jaws. You watch that enough times when you're like four or five, and it's like, oh, God, this happens all the time. See, this is why I'm scared of robots becoming self-aware. Eh, you know, and and apes. <laughs> it's it's bound to happen. Uh, it's called a piranha sharks. So the, the trailer, basically, it's these scientists who basically want to make, like, cute pet sharks. And so they uh, they somehow mix the genes and they get like mini piranha great white sharks, and of course what happens they you know get into the water system and are breaking into pools and whatnot, or breaking into like bathtubs. The uh, the image of it looks freaking awesome because it looks like a little great white shark. In the actual movie, because this is a B movie, like this is a sci-fi movie, they look just like piranhas in the actual show, okay. like in the. The actual movie parts that they show, they just look like piranhas. So, so it's really like that, like that piranha, uh, the piranha 3D. Yeah, it's was, it was basically you know, just an excuse to like show tits. Yeah, for the most part. I don't know if this is on Sci-Fi or not, but you know, terrible acting. I'm sure if it's not, there's probably boobs everywhere, and it's it's basically piranhas with the word sharks in it. So it's but. see, I'm I'm uh, I'm actually surprised that. Given your fear of sharks, I haven't heard a word out of you about the classic known as Sharknado. I haven't seen it yet. Um, I caught a few uh, like gifs of it, uh, like when the uh, dude from Nine Two One Zero like jumps through it with a chainsaw. It's a um, tornado of sharks. Like, like, like. I just, I just got done joking earlier about sharks wearing legs. This is even worse. This is, yeah. this, the sharks have taken flight. They are now soaring in the skies and. You know, it's 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 you know, great white death from above. Well, we had some nasty weather here last night, so I mean, I was sitting with a chainsaw at the ready, so you just never fucking know. <laughs> Sean, what are you doing? There's sharks. Watch out for the sharks. <laughs> it's like we're in the Midwest. What the fuck are you worried about? They they eat through the roofs. They, <laughs> that's how they get you. They eat through the roofs. But you know what? Everybody always says it's like you're more likely to be bitten or you're more likely to get struck by lightning than bitten by a shark. And it's like, well, you know what? I don't go outside when it's raining. So, you know, I stay out of the ocean. So I, I, have a, I have a statistic that will help you. More people per capita per year are actually killed by cows. I heard that. Than sharks. And you know what? I don't fuck with cows. So I don't either. They to me like it's them them some smug bastards because what yeah. they do is they just they just stare they stare at you with those dead eyes and ch yeah and they chew and you could just see it the expression in their face they're just like one day one day yeah you think they're like uh just like they have this like it turns like you know they've killed millions of us and you know what they do they eat us those fat bastards. And then One sometimes day. they feed. They feed. It's like Soylent Green. Like I, you, like I'm waiting for one cow to stand up. And be like, no, it's <laughs> us. It's us. Cow feed is us. It's like smacking, you know, cut out of other cows' mouths. Be like, no, spit it out. It's <laughs> us. And they go to those uh, two cows that are doing the eat more chicken signs. Like you're doing it fucking wrong, bastards. <laughs> Get down here and join the fight. The cow illusion is here. Dawn of the planet of the cows. Uh, it's got to be a movie there somewhere. It's, I'm, I'm, yeah, I mean, all it needs is that hook. It needs that one hook, that pun that just, you know, that makes the whole thing just click together. And I'm struggling to think of one. I don't know been staked for so long now we've staked you in the heart yeah something like that yeah all right well say so we've been going at it for a little bit so I'm probably wrap it up unless there's anything else you got to 
to talk about. We didn't even we didn't even get we get didn't get to any any shark stuff. All I all I got to explain was just your irrational fear of sharks. You well, hate you uh, hate sharks. Yeah, I, I I gather stories all the time, Baseline so I think point. I've got a few. He keeps you know, he keeps this is his way of 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 rationalizing to himself. Well, yeah, I mean, you look, they they always... I because think he knows it's an irrational fear, so he has to collect these things to say, yeah. well, look, <laughs> well, look, this this one almost bit somebody. Um, weren't, weren't they covered in a suit of meat? Well, yeah, but well, see, well, that's but, not the point. The point is, is that they did it. Uh, sharks, evil bastards of the sea. See, I'm more scared. I see it now, like, after thinking about those dead eyes, I'm more scared of the cows. I'm trying to think. Probably and realistically, the the chances of me getting hurt by an animal has probably been more likely a cow. Uh, we had a handful when I was younger, um, and there was a big red one that could, would always stare down my mom, and I think it got out of hand a, a time or two. And yeah, that, that dude would tear you up, but yeah, ended up in the freezer. So I guess we won that battle. <laughs> who's who's making who's the bitch now? You <laughs> are. Oh, it's frozen burn. Throw it away. Americans and their wastefulness. <laughs> all right. Well, on that note, I guess that's uh, all the bromance we have left for this show. So uh, this is Sean. And this is Richard. And I say we eat the beaver. Or, or, or the cow. 